Hi there, so here we are at the Shibuya Crossing in the Japanese capital, a spot used by thousands of commuters every day to get to the station over there. But if you're a tourist, it can be busy and bewildering, especially if your language skills don't extend far beyond ninja and sushi. So first up is an app called Voca, which could very well be a lifeline here. It's a bit clumsy having to hand the phone over and a bit of a trust exercise, but it beats being unable to communicate when you really need to. The free version will only translate your voice into text. Voice translation costs extra. Another translation type app is called WordLens, although I'm super annoyed it's not available in Japanese because working out some of these signs isn't easy. It's a great concept. Hold up your smartphone to something like a street sign or a menu and watch as it's translated before your eyes. It's not always word perfect, but it will give you a good idea of what you are ordering. Again, free to download, but rather sneakily, you have to pay almost $10 for a translation pack. Beware those hidden charges. If you've got a better translation app recommendation, drop me a line. The address is thetravelshow at bbc.com. We've also got a new Facebook page and we're on Twitter too. Well, here's an app and website that's definitely free, but it relies on you having friends in all the right places. Kuzu lets users see and share live views of public places. So for instance, you can film the queue at your favourite coffee shop each morning to let your Kuzu mates know if they should stay in bed that little bit longer. It's great for traffic too. There's a steady flow through Shibuya this morning, not at all congested. Though it's probably not a good idea to film at the wheel. There are live feeds from fixed cameras too, but at the moment it's pretty much restricted to San Francisco in the US. Public transport is a great way to really get to know a destination. Difficult to figure out sometimes though, which is where Hopstop comes in. There's good coverage on this free app, almost 70 countries around the world, giving you bus and train options from downtown Denver to Windy Wellington. Tokyo's tricky rail network isn't yet on there, unfortunately. Look at this, though. I've been testing out a route from the northern beaches to Circular Quay in Sydney, Australia. Hopstop told me to catch the bus. That would take me almost an hour. Any Sydney cider will tell you the best way to get across the harbour is by ferry. Still, this app could come in very handy if you're stuck in a foreign destination and don't want to fork out for a pricey taxi ride. Tweet of the week time now, and we all remember where the hell is Matt, that mad dancing man who did his crazy jig all around the world and now helps sell credit cards. Well, it seems Matt has spawned a load of copycats. Like UK college student Jake Gabber, who spent nearly four months studying Mandarin in China. He filmed himself dancing in front of the country's most beautiful sights over 100 days. I really hope he washed those shorts at some stage in between. It's not very original, but it's a great way to let your friends know where you've been on your travels. Another epic montage is from filmmaker Niccolo Bellini, otherwise known as the Human Safari. Last year, he travelled to most parts of the world. It's very watchable, particularly if you enjoy being repeatedly slapped. Enjoy. See you next time.